Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Actors' Lounge. I'm your host, Tony Langford. I'm also the director of a new short film called Revelation Blue. Now, what Revelation Blue is, is the story of Devin Blue. He is an ex-preacher, but he is now a Philadelphia police detective. And what we're going to be showing you tonight uh, are some behind the scene looks at what it takes to put together a hour dramatic presentation. A little different from uh, what you've been seeing before on the Actors Lounge, where so that was a talk show. But this is a um, one hour TV drama, similar to Law and Order or any of the other um, uh, police dramas that you see on TV today. So, again, it's called Revelation Blue, and I'm your director. And as you could probably see from some of the clips that you're watching right now, it takes a lot to be a director. It takes a lot to work with actors, um, making sure that they give their best performance, uh, making sure the script is clear to them. Um, it takes more than just taking a video camera or any other type of camera and just pointing and turning on the button and flick, you know, just flipping the button. It takes a little bit more than that. Three. It takes collaboration. It takes collaboration between the actors, the producer, the director of photography, the people who own the sets where you're shooting at. And we shot all over the city of Philadelphia, the Italian market, Center City, Philadelphia, City Hall, all over. And um, we want to really really thank um, the Philadelphia, the Greater Philadelphia Film Office um, for allowing our production to take place in Philadelphia. Um, we also want to thank God for giving us the talent, the drive, the, um, the initiative, the, the overall idea of a show called Revelation Blue. Um, we really want to thank God for that. Okay. And then deliver his line and walk. Okay. Okay, so if we could be you could just still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What it takes to put together a TV show? Well, it takes a lot of elements. It takes the, first of all, the drive to do so. You have to want to do it. You have to be committed to it. You have to see it through to the very end. Uh, which is what our actors, you know, our actors were great. Um, Nicholas Torrens, uh, Mark Bittner, Gia Voci, Jean-Pierre Polite, Mark Jones. All of our actors um, and guest stars were really, really committed to this project. And I thank God for that also. That's good. Stay by. Action. What happened? Oh, what? He never confessed. You forced it out of him. Oh, and what? You're gonna believe this punk over me? That's just what I thought. I'm out of here. We okay. He jumped mine, so I just went over. Okay. All right, let's try it again. Dr. I think. I think so. Yeah. Right? Wait. Wait. Tell me. You never. You never read, read him in his right? You have to really think about what the story means to you. Um, what it's going to say to other people. How are you going to say it? You have to say it correctly. Uh, this particular drama has Bible scriptures in it. So therefore, you know, the Bible scriptures have to be the actual scriptures. We can't paraphrase that. We want the message to be direct and clear, but also have a fun-filled, um, dramatic presentation to it. Um, as mentioned before, similar, sim similar to Law and Order. You can't see your face. Okay, good. Okay. Stand by. Action. What happened? He lawyered up. What? He never confessed. You forced it out of him. Yeah, that's just what I thought. I'm out of here. Oh, and what? You're going to believe this truck over me? You didn't read him his Miranda rights, Wormwood? Oh, he's been down this road plenty of times. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I? Are you gonna blooper reel? Yeah, yeah. This is it. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> me. Wait, can I get composure? Can I have a second to get my composure? <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Stand by. And action. So, being said that, 
we have a cast of characters. Devin Blue is our main character. Um, he's an ex-preacher who becomes a cop. And that in itself is a struggle. And the drama depicts that struggle. Living by God's law, but also working under man's law, that is a very heavy undertaking. You come to grips with situations that pull you in many, many different directions. And uh, what it ultimately comes down to, you have to choose which direction that you want to go into. And thus, that's where our story takes us. Our story is also about homelessness, um, foster homes, foster children, um, the good and the evil in life and how we deal with that. And also um, an old-fashioned crime drama, all wrapped into one. You're on the floor, right? You come up, you stand there, maybe like you come in and like, because I see her, okay? Yeah, then, then we stop, right? Okay. Right, right about there. Okay, back up further. Like center stage, right there. Back up more. Right there, okay? Okay. And then you see her, then you come out of your days or whatever you were in, then you jump up, then you come towards her, then you start. Then Get him out of there now! As, as he's approaching. Okay. Okay, it's really okay. bad. Okay. All right. Yeah, see, now wait a minute. Okay. Then, then you're like, now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Right, so I'm calm now. Right. Like, I'm not... Now wait a minute. Okay, I'm trying to calm it. Gotcha. You heard me. Right. Wait him now before I... And then you, like, go ahead. And you okay. Go, 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 go. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, let's do that part first. Gotcha. All right. Say bye. One of the things I, I think was the most difficult in making this um, this hour drama, this hour TV pilot, was getting all the schedules together. Schedules, um, as any filmmaker may know, is is not an easy thing. Uh, you may have a um, an actor that can make it one day but can't make it another, and you know you may have a location that's available for one day and then the next day it's not. It may rain one day and then it may not. It's good to have these things really planned out planned out in pre-production, uh, which saves you a lot of time when it gets closer to the shooting date. Um, I know myself and my producer wife, Nanette, she really helped me with uh, planning and pre-planning uh, locations, getting extras together. She, she really, really helped me with, with, with organizing the, the extras, the background performers. Um, which is an art in itself to be a background performer and all the other things that you know all the loose ends that you have to tie together it's really important that you work with a very capable talented and professional producer and in this case that was my wife and I was very blessed to have that asset to me yeah sorry it's all right all right for the top <laughs> I was like, what I do? She's like, damn it, you always do this. Like, oh. <laughs> All right, stand by. I feel like we were married. They were such a good time. Sound rolling? All right. And Take four. <laughs> that didn't happen. Take four. It's <laughs> like the snap. Action. What happened? He lawyered up. What? He didn't confess. You forced it out of him. That's just what I thought. I'm oh, out of here. And what? You're gonna bring this drunk over me? You didn't write him his Miranda rights, Armand? Oh, he's been down this road plenty of times. He knows his rights. Look. Yeah. We've got the rest of the victim's belongings. <laughs> it's already been tested for friends. There were a couple different ones on his Bible, but nothing that came up on the list. How did he die? Yes, perfect. Just like being on set with actors, that's a whole nother a whole nother story. You have to be you have to be the person that has all the answers. Um, and be ready to go. You're the leader on the set. Uh, everything is, 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 is based on your attitude. If you come on the set with a bad attitude or upset or depressed, it, it transpires throughout the whole day. 
Um, that's happened once or twice. Um, it's going to happen because you're human, but you want to make, try to make the best effort of not letting it happen because it does spread. Knowing your script is very important. You must know your script in order to direct your actors. So if you don't know your script, then everybody's doing whatever they want to do, and that's not your goal here. Your goal is to deliver a message on time, um, deliver your message where it's clear, and deliver a message where people can understand it. From the top. That's all right. Yeah, put it up. It happens. No, I'm anticipating saying things. I know. And, and I, I just apologize. I'm not good. Wipe your soda key and off real quick. It's hitting that floor. I'm going to tell him what's on the floor. <laughs> it's all right. It's, it's okay. Right. We're still rolling, is it? Is yeah, that right? Fine. Okay. All right. Stand by. Isaiah, take a tiny step to your right. There have been many movies and TV shows where there was a message, but the delivery was not clear at all. So that's very important. Um, since we are a small production company, we handled everything from props to craft services to wardrobe to script supervision to assisting a cameraman from breaking, breaking down equipment, setting up equipment, everything. But everything was done under the grace of God, and God helped us get through everything. And that's why this project is also dedicated to him. One of the things that I like personally is shooting outside um, because there's an element of not being able to know what's going to happen next and some people would say well that's something that you know I don't want to do I you know I will always want to be in control but there is certain element and a certain excitement about working outside that you can't get inside you know it's 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 a thing whereas you know you don't know what the rain's going to do you don't know what the sky's going to do and that can a lot of times work to your advantage and um you know, we were we were blessed to having some really really nice days. Um, a few days it did rain, but uh, we used that to our advantage. You know, we um, we embraced the rain, we embraced the clouds, we embraced the sunshine and good air that we had. Being a director, you know, you have to really enjoy working with actors um, because that's what you are. You're directing them, and you 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 want to work with actors that want to be directed. And when they have confidence in you um, and your ability, then that's a good thing. When they don't, that could be a problem on set. You also, you know, you always want to have actors. You're always going to have people that are going to make suggestions to you. But being a director, you you are the bottom line. You know, you say to them, "Hey, that's a great idea. I'll take it under advisement." Not necessarily choosing and doing everything that an actor may suggest. That's just that's just not the way it's done. So, saying that, you know, doing Revelation Blue, there were a lot of suggestions, and uh, there were some that were taken and some were not. And being a professional actor, you understand that. You know where that's coming from, and you accept it and you move on. As you could probably see from some of the clips, we're having a pretty good time um, filming this, um, and in actuality, we did. Um, it was a very very close knit cast and crew which I think is very important because you know you want to work with people that you like um, you want to work with people that are capable of doing the job um, but also you want to keep it um, you want to keep your set fun but also you want to keep it down to business you, you know you want to you want to keep it focused and that's what um, we were able to do I don't have 
having their lines to, to kind of re, 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 right. rebuttal or whatever, so it, it's got to show through my face, so I'll try to tone it down, no, but it's, it's fine. You're, you're perfect as, as Bucky, you know, I don't know why you even in there. You're not the one that arrested me, so I'm, you know, I got an attitude with you. So I, I won't, I won't, I'll maybe I'll just look no, aside as, your, as your badge, okay? All right. All right, let's try it again. Stand by. Action. To nothing. That pig, he kicked me in. It bent my arm around my back. Now that's police brutality. Look, don't play with me. Or else I'll get him back in here now. You confessed. Now write the statement. I ain't writing nothing. I didn't confess to nothing because I didn't do nothing. This is abuse. I, I want my lawyer right now. You, you guys didn't even read me my uh, Miranda rights. Second mark, you'd look up and then you go and then you guys do your thing. Okay. Okay? All right. Cool. And one note to you folks out here react as if you would react to a normal argument like a mall in an office or something like that. Okay? These two are going to be going at it. So some of you guys are going to come forward, some of you guys are going to back up. Okay? Um, what eventually is going to happen. Officer Scott is going to come to you and try to like, you know, just like, calm down, calm down, stop it, stop it. And Officer Roma is going to start to take out her cuffs. But we'll block all that as we're walking through okay. so it's all <coughs> synchronized. Okay? All right, here we go. Okay, this is just a walkthrough. Okay. Full sound? Yes. Revolution Blue. And action. You guys find anything new on our buddy? Nothing. They don't read what we know from the infomercials. Infomercials, what's that? You never seen infomercials? The boy's like an investment guru. What? Yeah, you ought to stay up past your bedtime sometimes to check them out. They're pretty catchy. Oh, and the woman who was screaming the other day ended up being his wife. Soon after she settled down to be understood, she gave us whole life story. Really? Where's she now? She said she had to go. Get ready for a seminar. You guys got her information? Hey, you're welcome. Oh, thank you, Detective. Now where are you going? I've got a date. 
Uh, date. And cut. Good. Okay, stick from the top. Getting down to the nuts and bolts of production um, on a small scale, when you have a small uh, production company, you're usually wearing many hats. I know I wore about 1,600 hats on this production. And, um, you know, that was everything from cleaning up a set to setting it up to tearing it down. Just making sure everything is going well. And with um, the help of my producer, Nanette, my wife, my right hand, you know, things went very smoothly. It was, um, it was worth the effort to see this project through. And, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing it on broadcast television very soon. Okay. Stay by. Rolling. Revelation. Blue. Take 16. <laughs> Applause. Cut. Perfect. Rolling. Okay. Yes. Re Revelation Blue. Take nineteen. So, if he was head of the seminars, why was he preaching from the Alps? That's the question we all kept asking him. He just woke up one morning and decided he wanted to work in the streets. It was fine at first, but then he decided he didn't want to lead the seminars anymore. Uh, to focus his attention to those people on the streets. Our followers are an exclusive group which is delicate to change. No, I, I noticed you always hold your um, seminars in very affluent areas. Why well, is that? Money is power. And power respects money, detective. We go where there both are an ample supply. Of course. Uh, that makes sense. I mean, did he ever tell you of any problems that he had with anyone on the streets? Um, uh, he would uh, speak about crazy things that would happen, like dudes getting out of hand, drunk and such. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You your think time. he was one of the uh, homeless people that he was helping? Certainly a possibility. How horrible. These people cannot be helped. I told that other detective to watch out for a guy I always saw hanging on close to Mr. Hassel. Uh, Bucky. <laughs> I think his name was. No. Unfortunately, a lot of times they can't. So, how's the seminar been holding up since he's been gone? What do you mean? Well, you've been leading the seminar ever since, correct? Yes. <laughs> and how are things going? Uh, very well. Good. Good. Uh, now, were you always in line to take over the seminar? Or was there any, anyone else that may have... I was always in line to take over the seminar. It was Mr. Hassel's wishes. <laughs> Um, but I don't understand what any of this has to do with the murder of Mr. Hassel. Oh, nothing. I just like a good seminar. I really hate to see one fail. <laughs> well, no worries on that, detective. We have a very robust following. This moment will only bring us closer. Is that right? Very much so. We have a seminar tonight. You should, uh, come by and see for yourself. We will. Well, uh, I hope you cast the killer. Oh, we will. You sound very sure. I am.
Was the steps supposed to be longer? No, 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 no. That's right. No, wrong seat, wrong seat. Let's take it, let's take it again. Uh,